JC, will you lead us to the Pledge of Allegiance? <laughs> All right, good evening. Welcome, everyone. Our first item on the agenda. He's here. You get to speak for the foundation at all. So, no, Stacy is not here to speak for the foundation. <laughs> no. He's not. Uh, <laughs> No, uh, I will, the, the foundation asked to speak to the board this evening, and I would encourage everyone to uh, take yeah. a peek at the Green Gala. Uh, there are still a handful of uh, tickets available. Um, August 26th. Um, encourage you to pull out your best green and come support the Smithville Education Foundation. And... Uh, with that, we'll move forward to seven one, but may come back when our uh, guest, uh, who is going to present to us, uh, arrives. Um, with that, uh, seven point one adoption or modification of the agenda. Um, if uh, folks have an opportunity to review that, if you uh, would entertain a motion to adopt or modify the agenda as you see fit. I motion to approve the. Agenda as presented. Second. Uh, we have a motion and a second. If there's no discussion, please vote. All right, motion carries 7 0. Um, uh, next item on the agenda 8.0 approval of consent agenda. We have a little bit more in consent agenda this time. So if uh, uh, it includes the regular session minutes for June 21st, the board retreat minutes on June 24th, approval for bills for July, supplemental pay for July, readopt uh, board policy, BBFA, the board member conflict of interest and financial disclosure, uh, approval of uh, contractual agreements, approval of the district property, auto and liability insurance, and the personnel report. If there's no questions, I would approve a motion to, enter, to uh, approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. If there's no further discussion, please vote. Excellent. Motion carries 7 0. Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda uh, communications 9.1 comments from the audience. Seeing none, moving on to 9.2, board priorities update. I uh, guess you'll notice I did share this out in the agenda that I wanted to keep this off. I don't feel like we've really identified those quite yet. Based on our retreat, we had some emerging priorities come, um, but we still had some pieces that we needed to um, solidify and start making goals like what Dr. White shared, um, I believe during the April board meeting about us developing the SMART goals, um, as well as potentially developing subcommittees as part of our work this year. Um, so I do not have anything right now specific to board priorities, but do anticipate based on our conversation later in the agenda, we will have those beginning next month. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Next time on the agenda, nine point. Uh, three, Assistant Superintendent for Academic Services. Thank you. I just have a few items to update the board on in which I uh, shared in a, a memo, but I also have some additional information that just became available today that I think you'll be interested in. Uh, first, we have made some adjustments to our gifted identification process, and there was a, a chart that illustrated that that was included in, in the packet. Um, in a nutshell, what we're trying to do, um, rather than only looking at students to, for um, potential IQ testing that already meet all other criteria, we're looking just a little bit below our other criteria points, such as um, our academic achievement, which typically would be our NWA reading and math. Um, there's a third criteria, which we call a creativity criteria. 
um, for in the last past um, that's been through a, a survey that we give to teachers. Um, rather than uh, only looking at students for IQ testing potentially that have already met those criteria, we're, we're backing down just a little bit because we have alternate assessments that we could use um, for each of those criteria um, in order to uh, qualify a student if they meet that IQ um, threshold. And so um, we feel like we'll catch more students this way. We're also doing this more frequently. In the past, we screened students in grades K2, 4, and 6. We're actually going to screen all students K through 6 every year um, just to give everyone ample opportunity to uh, benefit from this academic intervention. Um, this is a byproduct of a session that Whitney and I attended at the MSBA conference last November. Um, and worked with Cassie Reed and Paige Tybee, who are our gifted teachers, throughout this year to refine them. Um, and we put it into practice late spring as we began looking at students uh, for gifted services for next year. So very excited about it. Again, we feel like we'll catch more students this way. Um, and um, ultimately, that's, that's good for them. So um, additionally, on um, my list of comments, I just wanted to share some updates related to, to CFIP. Um, the next step, in addition to working on the action steps that we already have identified for this year, will be for our buildings to begin working on their building plans. Um, so the principals have requested a protocol for that, which we'll share with them next week at our administrator meetings. Um, but basically, our buildings will create building strategic improvement plans um, that, that complement and align to our district improvement plan. Um, and then they'll work those plans within their buildings as well. So um, just part of the process when we rewrite a CSIP and I'm excited to get that going and, and uh, provide direction for each of our buildings that will be unique to them, um, but also aligned to the work that we're doing overall. Um, last spring, when we met with our Duffy area supervisors and they provided feedback on our previous CSIP, um, I had to provide um, information about the updates that we give to the board um, and to our community. And one thing that they suggested was for us to create a dashboard that we would have on our district website related to three or four action steps. So not the entire CSIP, but three or four things that we deem as priorities. One of those things will be academic achievement for sure. Um, but next week when we meet with our building principals, I plan to ask them their ideas about what the other um, indicators should be. And I wanted to open that up to the board as well. So if you, if there are particular action steps that you feel um, would be good for us to continually update our, our community on um, via a dashboard on our district webpage, I would welcome that input. And I just wanted to extend that opportunity for you. Um, last week, I did log into um, the system through Jesse and saw that our FY24 career ladder plan has been officially approved. Um, which is um, excellent for us and our teachers. And again, we will be able to fund all three stages next year, which is very exciting. Uh, I know our teachers are already working on um, activities related to their career ladder plans. We have a lot of professional development going on uh, this summer. And many of our teachers are um, not only doing what's required, but going beyond that and picking up extra hours for um, I included the program evaluation schedule for the next two years for you all. Um, this year, we had one extremely long program evaluation night, and those um, events have been separated into different meetings, so I don't think we'll have the same issue that we had this year. Um, but I wanted you to have that so you can see as we complete each year, we just rotate um, to, the, to two years. We take what we did this past year and we um, move it to uh, the year after the next one upcoming. And that's pretty much the rotation. So we'll always have um, the schedule two years out. And then the news that I wanted to share with you um, that just became available to us is that we have received our student results um, from the grades three through eight math test. And I uh, did some number crunching when I returned from the conference today and got back to the Airbnb and I'm very excited to share. And there are a couple of grade levels where we saw um, some decline, but there are some grade levels where we saw some incredible increases. 
Um, and so I think that overall, we're going to see um, another positive um, result of our students' achievement this year as we look at um, our NPR and the data related to that. So specifically, we saw great gains in fourth grade ELA, 14.4 over last year in sixth grade math, an increase in to 20, and by 22.72 points in proficient and advanced, which is amazing. Um, overall in the district, we're at 77.42 proficient or advanced in mathematics. There were several grade levels in particular buildings where the number of advanced students was greater than the number of proficient students, which is very, very exciting. Um, we had a couple of grade levels where we saw a little bit of a decrease, one of those being in seventh grade, but I just want to remind everybody that all four teachers who um, were in tested contents in seventh grade at the middle school were brand new. And so we have to provide some opportunity for, for growth and, and the decline wasn't that great. So I'm not all that worried. Um, but yeah, I'm excited overall of what we see. And right now, all we have are, is our own data. We can't compare to anyone else. We don't even know what this date, um, it, you know, what the results were statewide. So um, yeah, I'm encouraged and I'm excited to continue to dig into this as um, more information becomes available to us. That's all I have, unless you all have some questions for me. Excellent news. We look forward to celebrating the successes and diving into areas where we need to uh, help figure out some support. I have a, I have a question. Um, mm -hmm. With the changes in gifted testing, I'm assuming we're hopeful that that will be an increase in, in students in the program. What's the plan then for teacher? Do you, do we feel like mm -hmm. um, we're where we still need to be with that? Um, if you're asking if we need additional staffing, I don't think so. Um, and I don't think we would for quite a while. I think we have capacity to um, to increase. I think where we're going to see the gains, typically we um, start off really, really small and with our first grade group and our second grade group, and we grow as we get bigger. I think what we might find is that we catch those students earlier so that they are able to start sooner rather than later. So that's, um, and what we're seeing so far is, is if that supports that that position. So um, I don't believe that we have a staffing issue. And with um, seventh grade, you know, new staff in there, is there anything that we can do or support to help those seventh graders this next year to get them up? Well, you know, we're always, I think our eight, we have a very solid eighth grade team. Um, so I'm not worried about the students. You know, I think we just need to continue to provide support to our teachers. Um, so that they are able to provide um, the best instruction possible for our kids. But that takes a while. And, um, you know, when you move into a district, whether you're experienced or brand new, and we have some brand new teachers who are in that seventh grade. So we just need to give some grace and know that, you know, there might be a little bit of a dip. It's not a big dip. So I'm very encouraged by that. And we continue to grow their their skills and their ability to work with their kids. And, and I don't see this as a, a major Any additional questions for Dr. Pratipo? Excellent, thank you very much. Uh, we'll move on to 9.4, Executive Director of Support Services. All right, thank you, Jeff. I'm gonna share the most popular topic and that's always the construction that you see going on on campus. So I'll just kick it off right there. And I, I have shared my screen with everyone. So if, you, um, if you're at home watching or if you're here, you can see up on the screen some of the pictures. Hopefully you can kind of um, show some of the progress. So I'll start with the Transportation Center right along 92 highway so we broke ground uh have a lot of earth moving equipment out there we have all the permits ready to go and so you can see that they're starting to uh, form what that site's going to look like um here in a little bit what you're going to see is you're going to see a huge pile of dirt on that um site and the reason they're doing that is when they did the core samples for the soil um, they found that they needed to to have more compaction before they could lay um the the slab down so what they're doing is you're going to pile up dirt and they're going to let the weight of that dirt for about six weeks help compact that site and then we're going to have uh, call valley go out who are the engineers on the project and go out and take more core samples and to confirm um that that did compact the soil to the measurements that they need to go ahead and start laying down the foundation this is the same process we did at eagle heights uh, for those of you that remember uh, the soil out there was uh, not quite compact for what they wanted there so we did the same type of um, solution there. The, the other solution was to do piers, which was about three times the cost. And so we we talked to the engineers and we believe that this will um, satisfy the solution that we need to get started 
Um, so that's when you start seeing that huge amount of dirt, you'll want, you'll know why um, that's sitting there. It's not just excess that they're trying to remove or anything like that. So it actually does have a purpose. So excited to see that transportation um, piece moving along. And then of course we have the sidewalks. Uh, this sidewalk you see here is actually the north uh, east corner of the middle school uh, staff parking lot that's going to go back to the athletic field there. So um, that's a picture we have here, but you've probably seen some of the progress we made up there by commercial. Um, at first, people wondered why there was a huge square when it's just a thin sidewalk. Well, it has to be ADA compatible. And so you can see if you look, they've actually started to pour that. Um, you can see kind of the slope as it comes down to where students, if they are um, need accessibility access, they will be able to go um, and take that, um, that in, incline or decline, depending on which way they're going. Um, at the slope needed to be ADA compatible to be able to access those. So exciting to see those moving along. Um, as far as our HVAC projects, um, all the units have been replaced at Horizon um, and the middle school. So um, all the new units are on, all the units are running, but they're just running in an isolated mode, meaning they're not programmed yet. So uh, Control Services, who is the programming uh, group on the project, is going around to all the units and, and fine tuning to make sure that they're communicating with all of our uh, designation servers that they're getting all the programs that they should and then so they're running the programs that they should so that's going to take a while probably all the way up until school and they might have a unit or two that just isn't quite perfect that they continue to work on so um, that'll be a work in progress for the next month even though all the new units are on and they're ready to go so we're excited for that some of these pictures you see this is actually um, one of the uh, mezzanine walls that's already been knocked out um, and so they're starting to put up the temporary wall behind it you might ask well why do we need a temporary wall behind that if we knocked it out well, the bleachers go up higher than the floor of that mezzanine. And so when you have the bleachers go up higher, basically the top of that temporary wall is where the heads of people sitting on that back row will land when you're in that area. So if you get a chance and you're at the high school and you, you should peek into the gym because it really has opened it up when you knock out those mezzanines. Um, and then of course, they're going to laser, laser measure everything and order all the bleachers. So that way we have bleachers on the lower end and the mezzanine to increase our capacity about 500. Before this project, it was about a thousand that we could fit in that gym. Um, then after this, it's gonna be about 1500. So it's gonna increase the capacity by 50%. So uh, we're excited to, to have that going, but it does take about seven months for um, Heartland Seating, who is it was manufacturing these bleachers to complete any type of custom order because these aren't just off the shelf. These are custom built because of the situation we have with that mezzanine. So you should see those come in in probably February or March, and then they'll they'll place those new um, bleachers at that time. So um, these pictures here are actually pictures of the restroom across from the gym at the high school. You can see uh, the nice new walls. You can see all the pictures have been taken out and new ones are put in. Um, they actually put in the commodes yesterday. And so um, those are in, and then they're going to put in the wall partitions and the sink coming in the next couple of weeks. So that's really coming together and uh, really going to help that gym high school area um, have some nice restrooms as well as a staff restroom just uh, down the hallway from that area as well. So um, the staff restroom is patterned after this design as well. Um, so we're excited to have have those parts of the construction project going. So any questions I can ask on construction before I move on to a couple other areas? All right. Let me close this out real quick. Stop sharing my screen. All right, a couple of other things uh, I wanted to mention. Um, we got the results of our Missouri Highway Patrol bus inspection. And so every single bus passed inspection except for one. And so we are 94%, which typically 90% is considered excellence. Uh, the one bus that we did have fail did have to be taken out of service uh, because when they lifted the back gate, the buzzer didn't go off. And so if that had worked like it should have, we would have been at 100%. Um, and so at 90% um, is considered excellent from Missouri Highway Patrol as long as you don't have to have a bus taken out of service. Because that buzzer wasn't, wasn't just a defect, but actually took out of service, we didn't get the war, but it was one bus. So when you have, you know, 22 buses, if you have one fail, um, then it takes away that possibility. But considering um, what the error was and considering every other single bus passed, um, you know, at 100% level besides just the one, I feel like it, it, it was a pretty good inspection from, um, from DS bus line. So I wanted to share those results. Uh, the next results I want to share is the Clay County Public Health um, gives safety excellence awards. And so we had a couple of the schools uh, that were on that award. And so uh, those schools um, that were on that award were, uh, we had Horizon Elementary, 
we had Maple Elementary and we had Smithville Middle School. And so let's see, in Smithville, they had, looks like 11 establishments. And of those 11 establishments, three of them were for our district. So um, that just shows uh, the work that OPA is doing with our maintenance and custodial staff to keep those areas clean, keep those areas uh, working the way they should. So when um, health officials come on site and measure the temperature of the hot water and measure the cleanliness of the ice machines and things like that, that, that those areas are, are doing what they should and be able to get that excellence award. So I just wanted to share that information. And um, I was not the first to see this. Susan was actually first to see this one and shared it with me. So uh, I appreciate that and was glad to point out their successes um, is, is working together with our contractor, which is OPA. Um, and the last thing I did want to mention is uh, we have been um, evaluating our HVAC units at the high school. Uh, as you know, with this last project, we did geo bonds to replace every single unit pretty much at the Horizon and Middle School. And is that is that what we want to spend our bonding capacity on, or do we attack it more like we do for our roofing projects, where every year we look at a section of roof that we uh, is in the most disrepair that we need to repair, so that way we continue to make improvements instead of just being a spot where, gosh, we have to wholesale upgrade everything. Um, so we did identify two units um, at the high school, and those are the units over the band in the choir room. Um, those areas face south. They face the sun. They get very humid. Uh, those units don't have humidity control. And we've had to pay thousands of dollars in the past to um, dry clean different gowns, um, different band equipment. And so those are two that we've identified as units that we need to replace. So um, I would like to kind of change our thought process on that instead of doing wholesale um, the HVAC replacement through a geo bond, focus that on more classroom spaces and improvements and continue to do a couple HVAC units a year that are in their most need, the ones that have the highest work order, the ones that have the highest cost repair for parts and replace those as we go. So uh, next month's board meeting, I will have those two units um, that I will ask the board um, to, re to replace um, at the high school that are um, for the fire room and for the band room. So just kind of want to mention we've been doing that work and looking at that as well. So. Um, that's all I have for my report. If you guys have any questions. One thing I'll point out on that Missouri Highway Patrol inspections, given the uniqueness of our current bus facility and the new one, both being in residential areas, the fact that we are at a high rate of maintenance on those vehicles, I think is definitely noteworthy. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Yeah, their their team has worked hard to keep those um, in working order and and at the quality where when inspectors come in and, and look at it, they pass at the highest level. Yeah. Robert, do we track a facility condition index for our buildings? As far as overall quality, air quality, everything together? Take overall quality and mechanical, electrical, and plumbing. And we, we do in the individual levels. We don't as a whole component, if that makes sense. I was just curious to see, because I know you're jumping over to that. I didn't know across the spectrum if we had switch gears, transformers going bad that needed to be looked at holistically across all mechanical electrical and plumbing. Yeah, we haven't had wholesale issues except for our VRF units that I've mentioned before at uh, Eagle Heights. And then of course we have some VRF at Maple as well. Those are the ones that have been giving us the most trouble and that unfortunately those are the newest. <laughs> okay. Robert, I, uh, I recently had a really good conversation with a mom, um, a special needs student um, talking about ADA and sidewalks. Um, while there's things that we have to do legally, can we also, and I'll, I'll talk with you um, after the meeting or another time specifics on that, but um, could we make it a point to get some of those perspectives so we're going above and beyond what is required, but making sure that we're really um, meeting their needs? Because there's some specific things that were really um, good to hear sure. that would make a big difference to those parents and kids. Yeah, absolutely. If there's any perspective that we can listen to and, and hear and take into account. When we design these spaces, we always have someone, whether it's the engineering team or architect, that understands all the ADA laws and what we need to do to make sure that those places are accessible. So those those folks are always on our committees when we're doing it. Any type of professional work, but any type of input we can get Maybe from a parent our too, community as well. Offer, yeah, practical absolutely. experience. Okay. Yeah, if they have any experience that their kid is facing, yeah. uh, of course, we work a lot on this in the last four years. All of our playgrounds yep. are now acceptable because they all have turf. So that was a big point of contention. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with the new War Activity Center, we wanted to make sure that we had an elevator in there. Uh, the floor is ADA compatible, where before our weight room was upstairs, you could not get up there. 
um, if you're in a wheelchair. And so as we've created these new spaces, that is definitely in the forefront of, of our minds. Yeah. Thank you. Any additional questions for Mr. Hedgeford? All right, we'll move on to 10.1, general financial review. I know we're new into the new budget, but I'd be happy to answer uh, any questions that you have. We obviously had no surprises so far. We're getting in numbers from our counties for assessed valuation. Of course, it's over the amounts that we thought, you know, our cap for um, Hancock Amendment is 5%. So we knew we'd be there anyway. Um, but, uh, you know, as we start looking for the set and tax rate in September, because Clay County is a charter county, um, we'll continue to work those numbers and um, keep you informed of anything we have. But there's there's no surprises to this date. Any questions on this one? All right, uh, moving on to 11.1, approve MSBA uh, 2023 uh, B policy revisions for the first of three readings. Did folks have a chance to review these and uh, any questions on these policies? So as a member of the Missouri School Board Association, we get a set of policies from them uh, on a basically twice a year. Um, and most of them are changes to policies that are required based on changes in state law or federal law. And so there are a number here that address those things, including uh, our assessment program, uh, ceremonies and observations, instructional interventions, and uh, extended instructional programs. There's no questions. Uh, I think the observation, just for those, <laughs> uh, I would, I think it's great that the Holocaust Education Week was added. Um, obviously a lot to learn from that. And, but I did find it interesting that of the, what, seven required by law observations, mm -hmm. you know what I'm going to say? Yeah. One of them is Bird Appreciation Day. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> do we really observe bird appreciation? We truly do. March 20th. You guys are laughing because I, you would, it, so they would give be a big one with the kids if you didn't. They give required and then recommended. And to see that break. that trumps some of these recommended. Mm -hmm. Is shocking. Yeah, I saw it also. <laughs> Mark your calendars. March twenty first, bird appreciation. <laughs> this is right around when we do our capital trip, anyway, right? <laughs> I so. Mm -hmm. I'm there are no additional <laughs> questions. I just uh, want to point that out. It's odd. <laughs> I would accept a uh, motion to approve uh, uh, these set of policies for the first of three readings. So moved. Second. The motion is second. If there's no further discussion. Uh, please vote. I, I didn't know which one you were going with, but yeah. <laughs> Motion carries 7-0. Next item on the agenda, 11.2, bond underwriting services vendor approval. Yeah, so in June, we released our bond council RFP uh, and we received uh, two responses, uh, one from Gilmore Bill and one from Hardwick Law Firm. And I'm pleased to have three folks from Hardwick Law Firm today. And so I have Mr. Hardwick, who is the founder of Hardwick Law Firm. Also have um, Gene Masseter, um, who is a partner as well. And I have Marcita Starks, uh, who's also a principal with the law firm. And so based on the criteria that we had in our um, bond council RFP, and some of those were the qualifications and experience they've had working with school districts, uh, their staff experience and competence, as well as their pricing scale with services, um, their familiarity with the project area, their approach, and also the references from other districts and city entities. Um, Hardwick Law Firm is recommended by myself uh, to represent the district for the next five-year term for our bond council. Um, and of course, if anybody knows anything about their, their law firm, is going to be uh, these folks that we have that graciously joined us this evening. So if you have any questions um, that I can answer about the RFP process or about Harvard Law Firm, I know they'd be happy to answer as well. So be happy to entertain any questions you might have. Good. No questions. Just welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I look forward to working with you guys. Yeah. Uh, I've had the pleasure of working with uh, Mr. Harwick in the past, and I will say, you know, he's not only the most professional, he is, operates with the highest degree of integrity, too. Yeah. So, so I appreciate have called you for a reference. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't know. Uh, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we 
we were calling districts. <laughs> we knew. <laughs> well, uh, you know, we we've participated in some lively lively conversations in the past, and and Mr. Harwick has always been just just an excellent person to deal with, so and work with. So. Fantastic. With that recommendation, I'd entertain a motion to approve eleven point two as uh, presented. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. If there's no further discussion, please vote. Fantastic. Motion carries 7.0. We look forward to your wise counsel. Yes. Yeah, thanks for being here. Well, yeah, thanks, thanks for coming being. tonight. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate Thank you. And not terribly far removed from that topic, 11.3 Bond Council Services uh, vendor approval. Yeah, so the um, bond underwriter RFP was also released in June. And so, um, of course, these both the Bond Council and Bond Underwriter work closely together for any type of general obligation bond that might be um, used by the district through approval of the community through the voters. And so I have Dr. Mike Wright here from Raymond James. Um, he is a team of, of many. Um, also, him and Dr. Alan Markley have 34 years experience of being superintendents in the local Kansas City area. Um, and they also work with managing director uh, Greg Barnberg, who has 35 years of experience. So experience was one of the th main things that we had um, in our RFP that we we're looking for, um, as well as their marketing capabilities, their approach and strategies, um, the fees and pricing, their institutional trading staff experience, and their market capitalization. So looking at all those criteria that we had, through our rubric, uh, we believe Raymond James will best represent our district um, as our bond uh, underwriter. And uh, Dr. Wright can answer any questions definitely about Raymond James you might have, or I can answer any questions you might have about that RFP process. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dr. Markley, too. Yes. yes. No, I wish uh, it would have been nice to see him this evening. So you'll have to you know, pass on a hello from us. So, yeah. well, our team is a bit large, uh, but there's two bankers here in Missouri. He is in Southwest tonight. Uh, okay. uh, you know, uh, dropping in on some uh, co potential customers down there. But, uh, you know, I was uh, happy after driving to Rockport and back yesterday to drive the 15 minutes down the road to Smithville. And, you know, we look forward to uh, uh, pending your approval tonight. We look forward to partnering with the school district. And that's exactly what we intend on doing. Uh, you know, we're, we're not just uh, here to provide financial services. We, we want to be a partner with the school district. Um, I've had the, the pleasure of uh, collaborating with your, your leadership here over my time at Platte County, uh, 13 years plus uh, in the past. So three or four superintendents uh, removed. Uh, I've always admired Smithville School District, and it's just a pleasure to, to have the opportunity. So happy to answer any questions that you might have. So as we have counsel here, um, 11.2 that we just approved was the bond underwriting services according to our agenda. And this is 11.3, the bond council services. So there for Oh, did I flip them? I'm sorry. I thought the agenda had just to counsel clarify, first. Yeah. Um, My apologies. As you, as you vote. Um, it seems like the vote's going to go well, right? So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Already heard Scott's working for everyone. So. <laughs> they're, they're great people to work with. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Markley, yes, I would I vouch for him too. So Thank, yeah. thanks for being here for this. I know it's important to you guys yeah. uh, as a supplier, but it's important to us too. So thanks for taking the time to be here, even though it is close. <laughs> yeah, appreciate that. And, you know, I'm uh, talking with uh, Robert about the opportunity here. You know, Raymond James is a large Fortune 500 company, um, but for Alan and I, this is a, a really big win for us. And so we appreciate the opportunity and we're going to make sure, you know, uh, everything that we've done at this point is flawless. It, it is our intent to, to continue that streak. Thanks. Right. We won't hold the Platte County piece against you. From <laughs> <laughs> I do have a green tie. I could yeah. probably <laughs> <make it. laughs> probably weren't allowed to wear it the last thirteen. Years. I don't have a purple tie. <laughs> Good. <Yeah. laughs> 
with that, uh, I would entertain a motion to approve 11.3 bond council services mm -hmm. vendor approval. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. If there's no further discussion, please vote. Fantastic motion carries seven zero. So welcome and welcome again. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, you got we can we get them switched up? Yeah. We got we, yeah. we voted appropriately presented backwards, but we got it. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, <laughs> fantastic. We'll move on to 11.4 surveillance camera software. Well, not uh, Mr. Ch Chair or Mr. President. Uh, before uh, we go on to 11.4, I'd just say sometimes we get a little long winded on these subjects. Now that we've approved it, don't feel like you have to sit here and go through the. Yeah. yeah. We have a tendency to, you know, sometimes go long into the evening. So uh, we appreciate you guys. Yeah. Is, that a, yeah. is that a heads up? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't feel like you know, I'm trying to figure out what five and six. <laughs> yeah. I, I appreciate, I'm we appreciate it. Yes. <laughs> thank you. I'm trying to figure out what you Thank you. All right, 11.4 surveillance camera software. Did this. I'm going to actually give Randy a lot of credit for this with the work he's done. Randy, please feel free to. Um, jump in but want to brag on him and his team really finding after 13 years of having the same software identifying something if if you think of all of those different pieces that have been added that integrates and brings all those together i um, just wanted to say thank you for going out to that rfp i know um, this is an instance where it's not the lowest bidder but it's the best bidder no actually, actually this was the lowest bidder we actually got really, okay. yeah, yeah this okay. is really great I, software I'm uh, the software is used uh, by a lot of other schools, by the Kansas City Police Department, municipality. So it, it's uh, it's really good software. Um, luckily for us, they have some really good educational pricing. So so we got really good pricing on that yeah. um, and a lot of additional features. Um, you're right. Yes, it, it has been a, a long time coming for the, the camera software. Um, the software we've had has served as well over the years. You know, we've been able to, to have coverage. Uh, in the buildings, but um, that's always been mostly just on the exits and some of the interior um, with the bond that was passed, we'll be able to have the software and the cameras to cover the interior of the schools and then also the exterior, which is something really nice that we normally haven't gotten unless it was a brand new building. So, so this will be a great improvement overall. Yeah, very, very good. Fantastic. Thank you very much. There's no uh, additional discussion. I entertain a motion to approve 11.4 surveillance. Genetech. Tech, TE? Yeah, correct. Uh, Genetech, yes. Yeah, that was the, the lowest bidder and also the suggested software. Yeah. It's good when those two match up. It's the exact software that I spent $4.1 million on. <laughs> okay, there you go. Well, what I that didn't have the educational pricing for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. it's, uh, it's phenomenal software. Okay. That's good to know. I was very impressed. Thanks. Thanks, Randy. Yeah. Good memo. So I have a motion oh. to approve 11.4. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. If there's no further discussion, we vote. Excellent. Motion carries uh, 7 0. Next item on the agenda 11.5. Development of board subcommittees. So this is uh, something we've talked about uh, and wanted to get kicked off last year for a variety of reasons that did not happen. Um, as part of uh, the discussions we've had, we uh, have previously identified finance, governance, and community engagement slash relations as uh, opportunities. We already have a wellness uh, committee that exists uh, as part of uh, one of our requirements. Um, for interest of in kicking off this discussion, we asked folks to kind of give some ideas on which committees they might like to serve on. And so I'll uh, present kind of my thoughts and then open it up for discussion. So based on these, um, one of the questions I had was, are there any additional committees that we want? And with without that, kind of adding three new committees, uh, my, I'm recommending that we look to add uh, two board members to each of these committees. Um, we let those two board members then elect a, a chair and vice chair from their, their group and uh, we treat these as committees of the board that then would notice up, um, have have meetings, 
and uh, would be open to the public and therefore any of us could attend who's not on that exact committee um, as it um, would be six members. What, I, what my suggestion is that the board president becomes ad hoc to the committee. Um, the superintendent kind of as such uh, is similarly and then assigns the appropriate uh, cabinet or central office member to help staff said committee. Um, and then with that, based on kind of what folks lined out, uh, my recommendation for you all to kind of kick off a discussion is uh, Mr. Jacoby and Mr. Nichols on finance, uh, Mr. Saxon, Mrs. Whitaker on governance, and uh, Mrs. Carlisle and Mrs. Cudd on community engagement and uh, relations. So hoping to kind of kick that off. The other thing I like about this is with that, then it kind of helps with development of um, of uh, governance from a, a perspective of folks running subcommittees. Um, each of these subcommittees would then be part of the standing agenda and then present their findings and their their things from their, their prior month's meeting if they had one, um, which then also then kind of allows us to get some of those things that we've been working on addressed a little bit further, as well as then, you know, being more public on some of the things that we want to get into and they would then help develop um, for our scorecard and then for ultimately the superintendent evaluation, those pieces that are gonna fall into those those individual pieces to, to be presented. And to your point, you pointed out, this does provide an additional opportunity for the community to provide input and be involved in the actions and the goals of the school district, right? Correct, correct. <laughs> So one of the things we had identified out of our board priorities and had discussions was the idea of, you know, coffee with the community and getting that kicked off. Um, I kind of had a plan, a suggestion on that, but I'd like to hand it off to the community engagement relations committee and frankly let them run with it. Right. Uh, one thought that I had the last couple days. Um, what about anything to have more open or better communication with our staff? Um, and I think that could fall into, we could have a, another subcommittee or put that in part of broad engagement relations as, as part of that, that charter as well. And can you explain the wellness, how that's required? What is that required by? I think that's a state, it's a state requirement hmm. that every school district has a wellness um, policy and program. And we're required to have two committees a district committee that we have a variety of stakeholders be a part of, and then also we have a staff wellness committee. And then our nurse coordinator also helps us oversee our student health um, and wellness um, policy as well. So with wellness, um, is it more related to staff wellness? Is that, uh, you know, it is a requirement for, yeah, so it was several years ago when they sort of merged this. Instead of just having student wellness, it just umbrellaed staff and student wellness. So, staff, so, staff and, mm -hmm. and um, does it have to be called the wellness subcommittee or could it be, could it have a broader sense, including wellness? It can have a broader sense. Mm -hmm. Maybe that falls under some staff. Yeah, the, Susan, yeah. You're, you're our representative. I've been on it for several years. Unfortunately, we didn't, we weren't able to do much during COVID, so it's just now going back. But I, it does cover quite a bit of different. Did we do the insurance under? Was so that a, or did prior I, to COVID, um, when we first initiated it, when when everything finally settled, then we knew we needed a district committee. We really did just focus on wellness, and then after a couple of years, we put in safety into that instead of having a lot of the same stakeholders at safety meetings and then at wellness meetings. We sort of rolled those together so that we could have several items on the agenda that touched a lot of those areas. Because when we talk about wellness, we can be talking about things related to benefits and insurance, yeah. things related to physical health, mental health, safety. So there's a lot of components to that. So we just need to illustrate that we have um, a focus in that area. So we can pull in a variety of things to that if we need to. And Kim does a very good job about it. And she is working on a handout to be shared with the whole board that 
really, I think, describes really, you could see more about what the wellness is underneath that. Because yeah, I had, when I first joined, I had no idea. So yeah. Would, would it be helpful if regarding this specific committee, we share kind of what that state mandate as well as some background, because this is an ongoing committee, what that information is on the Friday update yeah. that we send out to the board. Mm -hmm. Can do that. Yeah. Because I always wonder, I mean, from not having I don't the whole information, the but like, do we make it more broad? And then that's yeah. to, I don't know. And do we call it something else that, yeah, that's call it more something. related to actually the work that's being done, not just wellness? It sounds like it is a little broader already. I, I, I'm just. I think mm -hmm. we need wellness Safe. in there somewhere, like in that well, title, yeah, because yeah. we've got to check that. We yeah. were audited um, on that particular um, requirement several years ago. So, uh, yeah. yeah, we can include that in the Friday memo. Mm -hmm. And there's a nice FAQ on our website. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ken's going to go see the last time she updated it. <laughs> we <can> try to. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, but it sounds like wellness is, you know, has some yeah. kind of definition behind it. But are mm -hmm. we going to try to define uh, what these other subcommittees are and try to put it in writing? You know? Yeah, my suggestion is that, frankly, use the use the rubric and the the stuff that already exists for the wellness committee, and that the those com those subcommittees then go help get that defined as part of their initial uh, kickoff and get that lined out and brought back for formal approval of the entire board, but. That'd be one of the initial charges. Well, like our strategic plan, mm -hmm. making sure that everything in there fits in and is covered in some of these subcommittees. Yes, the so in you know the same one of the things that came up as a board priority when I had conversations with you back in April, safety and security. Um, I put that almost in the same bucket as finance. Very rarely do people develop a strategic plan and like that's their they're fighting one that doesn't mean it's not important or we shouldn't do it. Um, so I don't know if finance is directly in there, but I think we can absolutely tie like retention, attraction of our teachers and staff. Um, one of the things that you, we discussed at the retreat was comparable districts, you know, identifying those comparable districts with um, finance as well as recruitment. Mm -hmm. um, and then thinking about what a a really strong salary schedule would look like for our staff as well. So, mm -hmm. so I think some of those pieces do hit in there, even though if you know it, finance wasn't one of the pillars, I think it absolutely applies. I, I think you bring up a really, really, really good point, an intelligent point to consider, is we have yet to fully adopt and establish board priorities, but we're constructing committees in theory without having board priorities. And I feel like the committee structure should support the board priorities. That's how I see it shaping out strategically. Because to your point, I think finance is a big important piece, but I also, I think all these are applicable in their own right. And I'm sure we might not change the page, but to me, the first logical step is to solidify as a board what our priority structures are gonna be and then augment the committees to support that work. That's how I see it. But, you know, that's just me. Well, maybe we do this in parallel. And as the priorities take shape, we can we can modify the subcommittees because we all have almost of what those are. We really mm -hmm. have, I mean, we all have a feel for it, and it's all represented in form here. But you know, safety is a trigger for me. If you know, um, you know, how does that get indoctrinated, and how do you how do you draw a lot of attention? And there's a lot of good work that's being done that you know maybe makes me say okay, but. How do you develop KPI structures around that and stuff like that if it's truly a board priority, you know, and we don't have a committee structure for it? Well, we could certainly start with the the pillars from our strategic plan, right? And those subcommittees could get started on that and then kind of start to build out, you know. And always be called this. I mean, yeah, we do. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So we've, we've got, I think we've got some stuff to get started would be my thoughts unless people have thoughts on do we need additional subcommittees, you know, since since they're going to be formal committees, folks can go to whichever one that they are interested in and kind of based on the feedback from folks, they tried to kind of get folks into the ones they had suggested. But I think it's good. We've been talking about it for a while. I think this will help. I think this will help us as a board and 
help us all focus on our our uh, strengths. I guess I could I could see looking at this. This is a lot of our strengths. Is are we using our strengths here? And, uh, sorry, Susan. No, that's me. I had a question about so, Jeff. Governance. We're required policy to enact in governance review, and correct. That's something that was new this past cycle, right? Um. Yeah. Part of part of M sub six requires, you know. L number one is leadership and L1 is board leadership, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, part of what I see here is, you know, you know, making sure that we're we're doing things appropriately, we're, you know, effectively um, evaluating the superintendent and district performance that we have, you know, even down to board norms and th those type of things. Because I also think about KPI structures, not, I mean, we, it's easy to think of KPIs related to numbers, but there's also, you know, other KPI targets that are outside of numbers. Yeah, what's a KPI? Key performance Thank indicator. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. I definitely part of. Yeah. Okay, you bad. He has good knowledge. Just sometimes I just don't know what the knowledge is. Ball, so I appreciate that. Baldridge knowledge. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I don't know that. Thank you. Yeah, and as, as, you know, as we look at the community, you know, pillar two for the strategic plan is strong community partnerships, right? So there's some goals, objectives, and even some metrics and timelines associated with that. So, yeah. All right. So, uh, what 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 needs to be done to get going? I guess I, I I want to clarify a point with what you brought up with safety and security. One of the things that um, has occurred over the last couple of years with safety and security is that being part of your sentence. That way, you don't talk about the defenses you have right to that um so while i don't want that to not be something that we discuss or talk about um, i do want to make sure we also provide a buffer within that and i wonder if talking about the improvements we make around our safety and security does that work also with community engagement relations and if staff are lumped in there that there is a confidence level in what we're doing yeah you know that one in particular you know something it's simple from passion of the board sir governance standpoint we execute 20 percent of functional full scale so maybe it's under governance yeah yeah maybe that's it's under governance. yeah go ahead and some of these subject matters there just will be a natural overlap mm -hmm. yeah so 100 yeah. percent. yeah and I, I think a good point though is you know as as those subcommittees mean making sure that you properly util utilize executive session or bring to the full board for those things that are yeah are protected you know, even down to you know we don't want to say where we don't have cameras right mm -hmm. um, so, so um we did have this as an action item so if folks are are good with kind of getting this kicked off and the initial assignment um, is the is the idea I'm just thinking of communicating this back with the administrative team, two of which are doing us on Zoom, is with the goal of the subcommittees, and I'm thinking of your work and time, is it reasonable to meet monthly? Is it reasonable to meet every other month? What I, what do you all see as my fear, my fear, yeah, you know, if we don't make it timely to where we're touching it, it's just it, not gonna move. Mm -hmm. Um I, I've seen that. So that was Part of the reason to ask this yeah i i feel like you know if, if susan and i are going to tackle governance we probably need to develop what the charter structure looks like what's our scope mission you know and then develop a foundation to present to you guys i feel like if we don't start doing that you're, you're going to ian's going to be gone in april so i mean it will happen that quick if we, if we do quarterly or something like that so i don't know i say monthly until we deem otherwise to that's me that fine. sounds fair yeah monthly okay. Okay. And then we'll add this to a standing agenda item on the on our regular meetings for folks to report out. And if we get good at closing around eight o'clock on the normal board meetings, I'll just take rest. <laughs> Challenge accepted. <laughs> I get and a question to your to your point, Ian, or clarifying regarding do these become part of that prior, board priority share out? That's I'm not sure yet. I, I, so I that, to me, there's my head of correlations just like there is to our strategic mm -hmm. plan. There definitely should be a prioritization, which is why I'm probing about the task of KPIs mm -hmm. and how do we work. That's where my brain's going. But um, I think you could use this as a broad stroke. And then as we solidify the board priorities, they kind of get lumped under what, and maybe instead of called governance, it's it's tweaked a little bit or finance, it's tweaked a little sure. bit. 
I think that's where we have the opportunity to be a little more encompassing. Yeah, in, in, in my head, as we're talking about this, we've got our our board scorecard up as each subcommittee is presenting their stuff and you know folks can clearly see how we're how we're making progress against, right? Yep. I just want to remind the committees we'll need to take minutes. And if you'll provide those to me, I will compile those. Thank you. And notice up, right? Yep. Yes. The minutes will be taken based on seniority. <laughs> <laughs> you can, you just ask me a question, Karen. Does <laughs> not have to participate. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ideally, you're going to have a staff member assigned to help, right? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's <laughs> a new situation there. <laughs> Excellent. So, um, I guess I would entertain a motion to adopt the finance uh, uh, subcommittee. Can uh, consisting of uh, Mr. Jacoby and Mr. Nichols, the governance subcommittee uh, consisting of uh, Mr. Saxon and Mrs. Whitaker, and the community engagement slash relations uh, committee uh, consisting of uh, Mrs. Carlisle and Mrs. Cudd, and those are based on seniority in terms of the listing of names. <laughs> and the wellness. Did you mean wellness? Oh, wellness. Also. Wellness is already done. Okay. So we've got a motion. Makes Do we have a second? We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, please vote. Thank you. I'm I'm very excited. This is something I wanted to see done for some time. So I'm excited to A, get there and also B, I'm not on one of them. So. <laughs> can, I'm on all of them. You can be invited. Yeah, no, but it. But I, I do like the fact that, you know, we as a board working together, right? And everyone a part of it, not just no. an individual driving. Um, with that, um, almost uh, in strong correlation, 11.6, uh, development of board, uh, development of uh, board goals for the superintendent. So, um <laughs> How do we start this? Well, I so he's he's sitting right here. <laughs> governance to, to me, I, and this is weird because as we're talking about governance, I'm thinking about superintendent evaluation, <laughs> performance program, you know, planning and management. Um, but to me, I don't know if that falls in governance or not. But Susan, that's where my head was at. Just so you know, yeah, I was already creating brainstorming index in my head. Yeah, so yeah, I gotta learn this terminology, and I'm good. So. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't. Maybe that's. But I don't know, Jeff. Would you want a group to work on it, or do we just want to pick a night where we get together as a group? Yeah, and it, um, you know, I think there was initially a discussion about do we need a second board uh, retreat to kind of land some of those things. As we closed our first one, we all kind of lined out some things that we kind of felt were important on those. Uh, on those uh, help me tear out sheets and kind of help help yeah. get some uh, of those kind the, of going the priority the board priority focal points which should be directly corresponding to the task mm -hmm. you're completing to support right yep. so i guess with that what is the board pleasure do you want to get back together the group again and dive into that do you want the governance subcommittee to dive into that a little bit um you know, I think it would be good as a board to kind of get those lined out a little bit more um, and sooner rather than later. To be to be mm -hmm. fair to this, us and the superintendent, Mark, we need to give him. You know, the, he's eighteen days in. What have you got done? <laughs> <laughs> like, board meetings, <laughs> at least one and a half. <laughs> I feel like the board retreat kind of scratched the surface, mm -hmm. and we need to really delve deeper. So I think as a group. We all bring different perspectives. I think a workshop of that would be good. Yeah, I like I'm that. fine with that. Um, it's fine time, but I think we should. The, yeah. Uh, we have the MSBA conference coming up. Or is everyone able to attend that? Yeah. I, I'm not sure. I'm not. You're not. Got it. Which um, be too November second. The November. Is that too late? Yeah. Or. Oh yeah. I okay. think we should I would do say it. So. so how? All right. Do folks want to pull out calendars or do we want to? Can we yeah. Oh. Do we want to send out we a could, Everyone needs to hear it. We could do a doodle. Would you send like out a doodle and calendar? Yeah. Yep. Okay. I, 
one thing that I think, or one thing that would help me to, to the pieces, some of the things that we discussed in, um, some of the things when I called one-on-one -on -one as well as what we discussed in uh, our retreat were things around being physically responsible. I feel like we can tie that pretty tightly to not only our, uh, our, our work with um, our strategic plan, but also focusing on um, different teacher retention, all those different things. Um, safety and security, again, I think we just need to be cognizant of what in, in where we talk about that, retraining and growing and attracting the highest quality staff around, and then some academic pieces. Um, the, the common thing that I heard that I will just share, whether I was doing background research before I applied or even at the board candidate forum was the idea around growth and the importance of that. Um, I think you could talk to as a secondary person, I learned long ago the importance of literacy in grades K through three and how um, there, there's research that shows you can build prisons based on third grade reading level nationwide. Um, so I think those could be some starting points to us. What I don't want to do is knowing that we have to, we're going to get to this point and, and do that work is I want to make sure when we have that conversation that we're bringing you data and pieces that you would want to see. Um, so if there are other, I don't think that that's a comprehensive list. Those were just some pieces, but there, are, but there are other pieces to help inform this conversation as we build out that scorecard, the blueprint, however we do that that reflects my goals, please let us know so we can bring that to you in advance. Yeah. We want you to be as informed as possible. I think it's, we owe you a solidified picture of what we think the priorities are. You have pulses on a lot of them based on different opinions mm -hmm. and personalities. And I think what we owe you is we have to solidify what, because the span of control, I don't want to give you 15 goals and more. Right? Mm -hmm. that's, that's not realistic. You want to see us get nothing done, you can't. Right. right? right? But what's our top three or top yep. five, right? Or, and I think that's where we have to land as a group. And then I think as we do that, you know, it might be Ian giving up a, a component of what he desires with safety in his background. That's, that's okay. But that's what we have to really kind of massage out. And then I think from there, as we identify the critical task for you to execute, we'll, I think we could help. And then I think your, the administration can help on one of those accompanying documents to sure. make it measurable. And how do we identify that part? Of it. God, I love goals. Smart goals. Make them smart. Timely. And the uh, the MSBA is working intently on this, and it will be out. They're piloting a, a new one that I got to see parts of it at the last convention. It looks really good, and it's really it really is incorporating. They met with a whole group of they hired somebody to basically just work on this a little bit, and so they're piloting it this year with some school boards, and then next year it goes live. So. You know, I think we we get something going for ourselves, and then we look and see and incorporate together, maybe with theirs, and see where they're at. You so know, the evolution of this piece and how we support and better interact, because to me, this is the most critical piece in terms of how we drive priorities for the district in hand with the superintendent. And I, I just have not. I've been a part of the board for a while now, and we just have a lot of room for opportunity to do it better. I'm not saying it was poor, but. There's a lot of room to do it better in hand with you, and I think we owe that a lot of time. And we are not the only district. It was very much yeah. expressed that it's very hard for every district. <laughs> so I do agree. Let's let's get this right. And so we'll work to find uh, some time and uh, and pull together. And you know, I think we've got a good portion to kind of get a foundation of a discussion going. But uh, look forward to diving in a little deeper. Anything else on 11.6? All right. It's that time of the evening, 12.1. It's a good time. Miscellaneous. So 12.1, miscellaneous. We've got several things under here. Um, do folks want to share any feedback from their board retreat? 
Uh, I, I always find it incredibly valuable anytime I get to interact with you guys kind of in a professional setting and then in a very casual way. I think there's a lot of benefit to that. I, you know, there's a lot of, for people who might not know, there's a, there's a lot of competent people that sit up in their own right in their own industry and bring in a lot of different perspectives. I also think that's what makes it incredibly challenging is because there's a lot of different perspectives, but um, there's value to it for sure. And just getting to kind of hone in and be a little intentional about what we're trying to prioritize, I think creates a better clarity on how we move forward. I thought it was good and I appreciate the staff that, that came in the morning and, and gave us updates and um, understandings. And I, I thought that was very helpful. So I appreciate everybody that did come. I always think it's good when you get a chance to sit down and kind of line some of those things out, particularly as you have a new board kind of come together and get to know a little bit about those board members and then everyone else kind of see almost what their role is, right? I mean, we, as you look across this table, we do have a pretty good representation of our community. We've got great different varying backgrounds and, you know, folks are willing to let others lean in and kind of lead where they're the expert and, or the the subject matter expert in that area and, and work together as one on behalf of the betterment of our, our students in our district. And it's, it's it's great to do that and particularly to kick it off with our with our individual trains, which we have up here as a discernment and galvanizing uh, that I am. So, and then just a good, good reminder of those those roles and what we all do. Yeah, I think it was a good starting point. Like we're in a uh, kind of a pivot as a school district with the fact our strategic plan is fresh for us. Uh, Dr. Moss is fresh for us, so we're at a kind of the front edge of a lot of goals and objectives and change and direction, developing direction. And so I think we, uh, it was good, definitely a good starting point. And I think we're in a unique space in the fact that probably where we're at probably does require a second retreat mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. because of the uniqueness of being on the front edge of a lot of change and directions. I'm excited. Let's go. <laughs> I just appreciate everyone giving up six hours on Saturday. Uh, go down and do it. It was, of course, good for me. Every chance I get it, the opportunity to to learn more and did really appreciate the administrative team being able to sit with the board that morning and have those conversations, be able to share in a not so formal way. It was nice to have deeper conversations and be able to ask follow up. It, it really felt valuable. It was very valuable for me personally. I appreciate you guys giving up your time. Breakfast was really good too. <laughs> you are here. Yeah. Somewhat related to this topic. Um, I want to say thank you for the update to the to the agenda for this evening, including the board memos. I think that um, is really helpful on those topics for us to be able to do so. Any feedback from the board as a whole on we kind of reorganize the agenda a little bit. Were you okay with that? And if not, please let me know either now or afterwards as we kind of seek to hone in a little bit more on those board priorities and those, those key pillar items that came out of our strategic plan. Okay, item number two. Yeah, um, I got the opportunity to go to the MSBA conference with Susan. <laughs> Down in where where is it? The hotel Branson. I forget the hotel. It's the big one that you see in the lake. Chateau. The chateau. But at that time, um, Susan was recognized for earning her advanced board member certification through MSBA. It takes quite a bit of work and interaction, and they made sure and called all those individuals up and just want to say congratulations to her. Thanks for putting in the time and effort. Really appreciate your commitment. Thank you. It was. Um, I Very nice. To see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what everyone's concerned with. Don't trip. But yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Susan. Thanks for putting time in and doing that. Uh, other piece, just I, the MSBA fall conference is November 2nd through 4th. We're really lucky that they love coming to Kansas City mm -hmm. to do this thing. Um, so I think Ian said you weren't available. Completely understandable. If you are, even if we're part of it, please make it down there. Um, there are some great sessions that usually districts really focus to put on to inform um, what they're hearing and feeling. And having been down there last year, I, I know it felt like there were like four or five hot topics. And every time that topic was going, there, that room was packed. So 
would love to see you guys down there. We had some phenomenal discussion as a as a board down there this last one. So yeah, and I think for our two new members, is that when you're doing your training as well? Mm -hmm. So you okay. will you will have uh, plenty of uh, eight hours of uh, <laughs> education before we join you. Also, because Linda works for MSBA, she is. I have not seen it yet. I don't know if Robert has, but she will be sending. Um, hours you can count those hours during our retreat when Linda Quinley was there as okay. well. I'm just you know she's going to send a certification or a, a notification that those hours count as well. Okay. I've not added the the board workshops yet, but we'll get those added to those board meetings. Just want to make sure you guys um, have that list. And then the only thing we were hoping to potentially schedule, even if it was only first semester, is the board walkthrough where we make sure you get to visit all of our schools. That we can also do on the Doodle calendar um, through uh, Karen, or if there are big dates that you guys know you can't do, please send those to Karen or I, and we will exclude those. What's the general list. time frame? I've, I've not participated in a while, through, but I thought it was most yeah. of the day. Typically, we um, pick a date in November, and it is a full day to get to all of the buildings. Mark, is there another way that school district, you've seen school districts uh, able to gather that information that we get from the walkthrough? Like, have you seen it done other ways? Help me out. Uh, you said you haven't participated in one, so. Oh, not this one. Okay. Not a Smithville one. You did the same idea, though, in North Kansas City, or? Um, just a different scale, right? When you have. Yeah, totally. 34 sites. Um, so what what we would usually do is there were a couple different things is we would take a board member or two and take them through different events. Um, we did actually try to schedule a couple of board meetings. It never came to fruition, but a couple of board meetings at a school to highlight um, to be able, be able to see that and then go to feeder patterns is what North Kansas City kind of operated in based on their four high schools. So uh, it has been at a much smaller scale with one or two board members, um, but I think it's great that you all have that opportunity to go together. Um, but also, I would, if there's ever another time you want to go visit our schools, let me know. I'd love to to take you to them. Um, another powerful thing, I don't think now's the time with the amount of work that we committed to on this agenda, is um, shadowing a student. Probably most. Um, when North Kansas City went through a transformation with their high school several years ago, they had some committee members do that. It was fascinating, the response from. We had some teachers participate. We had some board members participate. We had just some, a couple of community, com community members participate. It was, it was fascinating. Yeah, I love that. I love yeah. To see that feedback from like, I didn't know it was, I didn't know you sat this long, or I didn't yeah. know, yeah, mm -hmm. just different things that, that they did. They ate lunch with them. I like went to class. They had to go to the bathroom. We didn't make a mess. The teacher, <laughs> they were able to walk out, but it was a very, very powerful experience that, that we were able to do with several staff members, community members, and board. Were we able to drink coffee? Did you? So you start to realize what kids go through. Like, do I wait in that line at Starbucks at 7 30, or do I wait at, you know, the coffee? Um, I hate to call it a shack, the right. coffee trailer. Yeah, the grind. The grind. Thank you. The grind to be late to school, or do I go without caffeine? <laughs> Ooh. He's talking about at, yeah, day two, day two. Mm -hmm. that used to be something. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Child, yeah. The one up by Major Mall. What's, yeah. What's the death but that, that was really cool. And timing is everything there. It was that, it, you know, this may be something you attack in the spring, but very powerful experience for mm -hmm. those that participated, including myself. Fantastic. If there's no nothing else, I would entertain a motion to not adjourn. The Boy Scout who was supposed to come, yeah. he was confused about the time. And oh. he did reach out to me, but it's probably too late now. So. Is he here? No, he has not responded. Okay. Um, we will welcome him next month. Yeah. yeah sure. Quick question. If he needs to potentially get started before next month, is there any concerns with him moving forward and still kind of give an update? No. Okay. No. I did my Eagle project by the middle school, so oh, I'm partial to what he's doing. Is there? I can't. No, the pond's gone. It's the baseball field. <laughs> I don't know what he wants. Okay. What's, he want? What's he want to do? Oh, 
<laughs> was general scope. I Something with the school district. Yes, I'll send it. I'll send his information out. Karen, do you remember? Was it building uh, benches? benches? I believe. What the oh, Eagle Scout what is project? Was. I don't think he ever told me what his project was. We'll make sure and get that out. Okay. Yeah, that's what we're going to Just curious. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was something that I felt he could have approved anyway, but knowing it, presenting it was part yeah. of it. So. Yeah. No, that's interesting. Oh, here we go. Painting the walls with a robotic. I just say we need to know some of those things. For things. Building a metal storage rack. Huh? Yeah. These robots. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. With that, I entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. We have a motion and a second. If there's no further discussion, please vote. Who was the second? Congratulations on completing your first. Uh, Congratulations. Do it two it's weeks. Like record time. Yeah. yeah. Don't get used to that. No. Oh, we're going to have them. <laughs> we just <laughs> delayed the big conversations to our retreat, right? Yeah, we did. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks yes. for coming, guys. So Thank you. Bye. Congratulations.